process, painting from the source, is not, um, it's a name that I gave to, to something, to a creative energy, to a process that's as old as, as that. Uh, I didn't make it up. I didn't invent it. Um, it's, it's as old as the first human that took a piece of charcoal from a fire and, and started s smudging it on a, on a cake wall or, or took a piece of flint or a sharp edge and started scraping on a piece of wood. It's the way the people who are called to create we have created throughout all of time and in every part of the planet. So we're going to sanctify our painting studio um, by lighting candles, by saging, by coming in quietly and reverently, possibly drumming before we paint, and sitting in a circle with our hands held and asking for guidance and protection as we go through this sacred painting journey together. This is a video about a week-long painting workshop. We invite you to share in the insights and exaltations of its participants. Let your hand choose what size brush it wants. Let your hand move to whichever color it wants to go to. And let your hand paint the painting, not your mind. It can be enormously helpful, illuminating, and even reassuring throughout this entire process to know that you can make no accidents and no mistakes. <sighs> well, what brought me here was a piece of the evolution of myself trying to get past this fear that I had of working as an artist. And I knew if I made the commitment to come here and work with other people in a very focused kind of way, that I could push myself. I knew that the energy would be here. You no, know, I really want to see you, your pictures of me having a tantrum. I never had tantrums as a kid. My sister had absolutely bloody, awful, terrible, terrifying tantrums. Oh. One of the reasons that I wanted to come was because I was having a lot of doubts about my painting. I was really beginning to doubt that what I was doing was um, worthwhile for me. And my intention for this week was to own my dark side. For me, it's all, it's all about freedom. So I like my life to be free to be who I am, not who someone else wants me to be. Also by <sighs> inspire. I know I need to trust that um, my originality will emerge. And it will give me the that it will give me the energy to do what it is I need to do. And I had so much fun with that. I mean I was just slapping paint on there. A major key to tapping the source. A key to staying in the process is to stay in the same painting. When you feel stuck, when you're in doubt, <laughs> keep moving the brush in the same painting. As you begin, feel the wet color. Feel the wet liquid moving on the paper. Become the color. Become the line. Become the shape. Pretend it's the first time you've ever painted as a child. Even if you never painted as a child, just imagine what it would be like. Smell the paint. You might even want to put your fingers in it. 
just let your body feel the experience. Allow yourself to feel the sensuous pleasure of painting. And know that we are often as fearful of pleasure as we are of pain. So just stay on your edge of this sensuous, delicious, playful experience. When you're new to the process, and also in the early hours of painting, you may want to move to a new paper because something appeared that you think you could never do again. It becomes overly precious to you. You become prematurely attached, and that stops the process. It stops the flow. Know there is much more where that came from. There is birth, death, and rebirth. This is the process. It's about being in the experience, being in the full process of painting, the full sensuous experience. Stop it! Come on, really. Bad ass. Whoa! You might even want to put your left hand in it too, and do two hands, you know what I mean? Like put. Fill it up with paint and get both your hands. The key for you, Christine, is to just keep asking your body what it wants, what sounds it wants to make, what it wants to do with the paint. You know? Just breathe, breathe. Yeah. Often there are many separate sheets of paper, many of what seem like separate paintings, which, after looked at closely, come together and connect as one painting. Many separate pieces of a puzzle connecting to complete one painting. The details can be as luscious and sensuous as the broader, unfocused strokes. The details bring the process to a deeper level, to a higher level. Actually doing the details can feel very difficult and very easy and fun. The expression, the devil is in the details, is well known. I say, God, as well as the devil, is in the details. And you cannot do too many details. The dew on the peach, the eyelash on the fly. Caress the details as you do them and enjoy. ways we as a group of separate people painting become one entity larger than the sum of our parts as we spend time painting together a supportive group 
painting energy evolves. We cross-pollinate. These flames are sort of holding the whole thing up. But at the last minute this afternoon, I wanted to put this, this painful spine in there that's twisted and tortured and sort of chained down to, to whatever this old stuff is. But the chain is broken. Today, I expect a lot of pain, and there's some pain, of course, but there's also a lot of support that I did not expect like that. No more. No more. No more. I don't have to do it right anymore. I She said, paint, I, I knew it was the trap then, and she said, well, paint the hand. And it was such a loving thing to paint my hand because I love my hand. I said, I don't even know what the trap looks like. And you just said, go paint the trap. And I kept saying, what is this trap? What is this trap? And all of a sudden I knew that the trap was these lies that I've believed my whole life. And the lie is that love does not last. If, if some of you are painting painful topics that you think is not art, you know, this is more therapy. Every painter had to go through these paintings before coming to a place of integration. This spontaneous painting process naturally moves you to an altered state of consciousness similar to the dream state. And that crow, I want to take the crow out. I love crows. A lot of people can't stand their sound, but I love their sound. Reach. 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 Re
is our fear of ecstatic pleasure, our fear of being fully in our bodies. This was programmed in us from early painful experience. Here and now, while you are painting, you have a chance to stay on your edge of pleasure. Kind of like that little, it could, it could be a tiny little thing in the painter. It could be a uh, heart on the, in, the, in, you know, in the chest, a teardrop, a, um, a spider, <laughs> a snake. You know, some little final piece that's asking to come in that I call the quantum leap in the painting because it can very, and many of you have had your quantum leap already, or many of them. It's a place that brings you a step deeper. It's like a surprise, something that you never would have imagined you would have painted when you started.
The big question which always arises, how do I know when the process is complete? How do I know when the painting is finished? I hear it over and over. For first timers, it's hard to answer this question. It's like trying to describe to a hungry person who has never eaten a peach what it will taste like and how satisfying it will feel after the peach is eaten.